Hi, my name's Andy, and somewhere under this is my Ford Escort. There's a little bit of work to do. I was going to sit and try and talk here, but it's it's coming up that time of year when everybody's starting to cut the lawns, and somebody's going to start another lawnmower up in a minute. Or a power tool, or a pressure washer. I'm probably showing my edge a bit now, but when I grew up, the Escort Cosworth was one of the coolest cars on the road. Even back in the 90s, it was a bit of an urban legend, and you didn't see too many of them around. Some say it had so much downforce that it could drive upside down on the roof of a tunnel. There's probably a whole other video just on the myths and the rumours that surround this car. I'll cover them later, I think. This wasn't the first car that Ford developed for racing, and it certainly wasn't the first Escort. Although I would definitely argue that it's one of the best. The car that I have is a motorsport shell, so it's never had chassis numbers, it was never a road car, it would have been driven on the road and it would have been road legal with number plates. It doesn't have them, it doesn't have any information with it, it's very hard to trace which car it was. I've ruled out a couple of people that didn't own it, but I still have no idea whose actual car it could have been. Once I get a chance to clear out the garage a little bit, I'll get in with the camera, I'll get a load of pictures of the car, and we'll try and we'll try and have a guess. Nothing's set in stone yet with regards to the plans to build the car. Um, it will be four-wheel drive, it'll be around 600 horsepower, and I think it's going to be it's going to be a shade of blue. I don't know whether it's imperial blue like the original Escort colour or whether it's going to be nitrous blue just to make it a bit different but still an RS colour. It is going to be a full WRC build with the correct bumpers, the spoiler. Um, we're going to go carbon bonnet, roof and boot lid and so far that is about as much as I've planned. To help pay for these projects, I make Grizzly Bars. All natural soap and shampoo bars that, as you can see, are also great for removing dirty motor oil from your hands. Head over to grizzlybars.co.uk and order one to try today. There's many different varieties. And the best part is, you are helping to revive a classic car. Start getting this garage cleared out then. Oof, I've definitely packed a few pounds on over this winter, but on the bonus side, it did give me the fat man ballast that I needed to lift this near 60 kilo gearbox with ease. Furthermore, I apologise for all the shots of my butt crack. I didn't realise how uh, <laughs> how eye-catching it was on camera quite so much while I was filming this. On the plus side, I have got um, I have got a lot of parts here that we'll be taking off and not using for the builds, such as the bumpers, a uh, few other bits and pieces. Um, there is a set of wheels on the car that will be going up for sale, the Sierra ones, but. So if you're interested in any bargain parts from this build, then I'll give them a good clean up and I'll get them on eBay hopefully shortly after this video drops. I have already got several parts for the car, including a pair of brand new Marette headlights. I've got the diffs, I've got the drive shafts, I've got a couple of prop shafts. We'll see what's missing when we get to the end of it and fitting them all. There are a few most parts for this car scattered around, 
here you can see me getting brand new intercooler and radiator and going safely putting them up to the back of the garage just as I knock that front panel straight off the front of the car. I guess we're finally on to a little bit more of an interesting bit on this video now just the walk around and a quick look at the car um, yeah it has that bar across the front that wing I've put my hand on that's a little bit bent the chassis rails are a bit bent it's got those weird gills cut in the wheel arches I assume to let mud into the engine bay not really sure why um, there's a lot of features and a lot of bits of welding and pieces that somebody must be able to kind of have a vague idea or identify the car maybe from uh, there's the wheels the Sierra wheels these are just what came on it so it, it would be good if somebody could give some kind of insight or history into it um, it's got a mark 5 dash fitted there there's a mark 6 inside if we have a quick look up on the roof you can see there's an original aerial hole I think that is um, I'll just move all the rubbish out the way and then you can see there's another hole there I think that was drilled for another aerial um, who knows but that seems a little distinctive to me I don't think they all had them drilled in there so maybe that's a clue um, having a quick look around and I did forget to look down here and show you that the area of floor where you'd normally see the chassis number that hasn't been tampered with it looks original to me and there's no number in it um, also the car does have seams on it so I don't think it's a 909 I think it's a, just a motorsport shell um, no more evidence of a chassis number up there and go along to the back of the car just me squeezing down the tight side of the car um, you can see this rear quarter panel it's got quite a bit of extensive damage, it's really been stoved in um, and somebody's tried to repair it and yeah that uh, might be a clue for someone and again with the floor, the cage design in the back sorry I didn't fully clear all the rubbish out of it um, the roof is a little bit dented um, I think they've cut holes in to weld the cage in at the back so we'll sort that out with a new roof and. Uh, and get going and again just looking in the back here you can see um, there's no evidence of chassis numbers or markings does need a good clean up in the back um, yeah we'll see how it goes and how it comes out just a quick look down at this quarter panel that's where the filler cap was fitted um, and down here when I move the camera that's where the kill switch was I think those will be coming out and being replaced and yeah if anybody can kind of give any any type of indication as to which car it was that would be great just leave a comment below and here's my shelf full of a load of other parts to go on the car and along with a few more garage items that probably just want thrown in the bin thanks for watching so far I don't think this was the most exciting episode hopefully all the good bits are still to come in this series we've got bodywork we've got fitting all the parts we've got reconditioning them if I can't do it myself I find the best people I can to do the jobs where I'm aiming for with this car is it's not to put it back as a race car I think in my head now it's retired um, it was possibly retired due to the crash damage it's got but I don't want to hide the heritage and I don't want to hide the history of the car what I want to do is preserve it and I want to keep this car as kind of the best version of itself that it can be so it's going to get parts to make it more reliable just to make it you know usable as a daily driver it probably won't ever be a daily driver um, to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But yeah, we're going to try and make it as good as possible. Um, it'll be getting stuff like electronic ignition, hydraulic clutch, all new bodywork. I'll repair the damage on it. I don't want to be driving around looking like a Frenchman. What I want to do is get the bodywork up to scratch and... Um, 
yeah record the history as i'm doing it so that's not lost that's that's kind of i think important in terms of this car um hopefully you like what i'm doing um and you want to see more of it in which case like and subscribe and i'll see you next time i'm not sure what i'm doing next time but i'll see you next time on a side note, I did work out that I only need to sell about 15,000 bars of soap to pay for this project. So if if all of my subscribers could buy about 1,000 bars each, that would be fantastic. Cheers.